Hi guys and welcome back. Um, I'm here in my classroom um, setting some things up but a majority of this video is going to be at my house because I like to film there better. I can control the light and I'm comfortable and I can wear whatever I want. But today we're talking about something that I'm pretty excited about which is made for me math. And if you have watched my channel, if you have heard anything I have ever said or done on the internet, it usually um, has something to do with especially education. And I am a huge fan. And um, especially education and teaching special thinkers, um, those two stores combined to create something beautiful. And they created Made For Me Literacy last year, which is incredible, and I use a lot of those things still this year. Um, basically, it's a curriculum for kids with special needs, for kids that learn at a different pace, that need a multi-sensory approach, and I really appreciate that. This year, they created Made For Me Math, which is um, phenomenal. And it's for a lot of kids that math is just coming to them at a different pace. And um, the units build upon each other. So they started with colors and now we're into October, which is numbers 0 through 5. And I think the next unit is going to be numbers 6 through 10, I believe. Something like that. Um, but... I oftentimes see the greatest things on the internet, but I feel a little bit stuck. I basically have to use the curriculum for my school as well, which I love to use um, because I can pick what I need from different parts and um, I can make it into something that really works well for the kids. I appreciate that I don't have to pay and spend all of my own money to find worksheets and workbooks and regular books and all of that stuff. So I appreciate my school for that part, but um, there are some kids that I have where that just doesn't work for them, and um, I am really grateful that I have Made For Me Math because it's really been helping some of my kids. So I want to show you um, how I plan it out, how I incorporate it into the math that I'm already doing for my school and my district. I'm going to show you how I use them for centers, which centers can be tricky. My centers still involve um, another adult with the kids um, because they need that support. And I also use um, Made For Me Math in my independent workstations. And so I plan all of that out for the week, incorporate some of what they've created and then some of what I already use. And it really helps my kids. And then in addition, there are art projects, anchor charts, read-alouds that just kind of go with everything. I'm not going to show you um, how to make um, a file folder game or how to print off what you need. Um, those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, some of the products in this unit have like some prep behind it, so be prepared. There's um, some read aloud books that you might have to bind yourself. A lot of things need to be laminated and um, added. You need to add Velcro to them, but I will tell you that if you do that, then you can use it again and again, and I think it's worthwhile. Also, if you want to add any additional manipulatives on top of what you're already doing, then go for it because there are a lot of really cool worksheets and centers and tasks and all sorts of stuff that go into this unit and it just makes it even better when you kind of add your own flair to it. So I am leaving here. I'm going to go back to my house and I'm going to show you how I plan for my week and how I incorporate Made For Me Math into everything. Here I am back at my house and I'm just going through all of the prep work that I need for this unit. First, I start with the curriculum that my school already uses. We use Math Expressions, which I think is from Houghton Mifflin, but I know that every school uses something different. This is the kindergarten curriculum that I use for a lot of my students that are working on those basic number skills. Um, and the first grade curriculum for math also is kind of similar, um, but I just like to look through the workbooks, the homework books, and the teacher manual. 
Sometimes I have students that have IEP goals like this, or sometimes they're like this. Those are the goals that I try to work off of. So first, I sometimes will look in my teacher manual. Um, I try to follow the pacing guide, but as you know in special education, we slow down, we speed up, uh, we do whatever we need to do to make sure the child is learning. And right now, I'm just looking through. Um, my students are working on some numbers, like numbers one through five. So this teacher plan book is from Staples. It's just a basic one that I'm going to use for an example, um, but I try to plan out my math um, for all five days of the school week. And because I have other staff that works in the classroom with me, I try to be as specific as possible. I write out the math group. Maybe we're doing something as a whole group together first, and then we break apart for centers, or we're working in small groups, and there are some kids at independent math stations, um, whatever works best for them. So here I have my math group and then my math stations. So I'm going to write out exactly what we're going to do. If it's from the teacher book, then I'll write out um, the teacher work pages and then the kids um, activity book pages that go along with it that correspond to the lesson. Um, and then I will also add in the made for me math centers that also go along with what we're learning about. And as you can see in this teacher book and in any teacher book, it just gives you the prompts to say things to work on. This page right here for the kids actually is having them count out different manipulatives for numbers four and five. And so that kind of goes perfectly with um, the made for me math lesson. And then on this page, it's actually working on handwriting. So how to write out your fives, um, draw five objects here, five objects there. Um, so I think that this is something that I'm gonna use for the kids. So for my math group, I'm gonna plan from the curriculum book first on that Monday. And sometimes it will come along with um, student pages that they will work um, on together or they'll work on separately depending on the day. Yep, so they're working on numbers four and five. Next, I'm going to add in the centers that we're going to do. So for the Made For Me Math, I think here I planned that we were going to do the anchor chart. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the anchor chart um, all together to work on that number. And if you see in the unit, there's a really awesome anchor chart that goes with each number. Um, that's kind of like a collaborative activity to do. And then in my math rotations, I'm going to have the kids work on different skills, skills that they already know how to do. So they might use center two or center three, which is just counting out numbers, or maybe they're matching quantities to the number. There are so many options in this made for me math um, unit that have to do with centers that that's really been helping me. And I've been using it for the whole month. So here is just a screenshot of a math lesson plan, just an example one that I have for the whole week. It's broken up into whole group, centers, and independent workstations. The black is for my school curriculum and the red is for the made for me math curriculum. And it has been going really well and it breaks it apart so I can just kind of track how they're doing overall. So I've kind of sped all of this up for you, but once I've planned it out and I know exactly what we're going to do each day, um, I prep what I need from the unit. Now, there um, is an incredible blog post on Especially Education's um, blog about different prep tips and um, different ways to store your pieces, so I will not get into all of that, but I just... Oftentimes I laminate everything so that it's more durable. Um, I put my centers in those poly envelopes so that it's easy to use. I actually will take that whole envelope and put it on a table for the kids to do. Um, they know exactly which rotation they're going to um, and they'll go right to the table. 
them and another student and maybe a staff member, depending on their needs, will um, start in on that center. Sometimes I actually keep the center stuff in these little um, envelopes, these little trifold envelopes. That also works really well, um, but regardless, I like to have them with easy access. There are activities that the kids know how to do. If they're not familiar with them, then we will go over them together at least once before I break them apart into their math like groups to try and do some of their stuff independently. So for some of my kids, they actually need um, something that's going to be present to kind of help them remember the numbers. They're still working on their independence and they're getting a lot better with it, but I like to put the vocabulary cards or anything kind of like that somewhere where they can reference it, somewhere where it's standing up. And I found these from Ikea. They're like a dollar or two dollars. They're the little stands. And it's been super helpful for my kids to have them just standing um, at the table. Clearly, I'm struggling to put it on, but <laughs> it's a little easier <laughs> now. Here we go. Um, but that's been really helpful. I'll leave it there. Another thing is um, in this unit, it does come with a read aloud. One book you do have to purchase and the other one is this Counting at the Zoo that Michaela wrote and um, added different pictures to count. Um, sometimes my kids have a hard time with laminated pages to be able to pick them up and turn. So I actually printed it on half size sheets of paper and I added it to like a photo album. So they're able to kind of turn the pages and it's a little bit easier. That's been something that's been extremely helpful. For any of the other worksheets, I do keep them in a binder with sheet protectors. So when we do um, either group work or work at the table with a staff member or a paraprofessional, um, I have the pages right there for me to photocopy. Um, especially some of the kids are working at a little bit of a higher level, so I'll use those pages um, kind of for more independent work for them. So I've seen on the Facebook groups that a lot of people are having trouble getting the interactive books or interactive questions onto their tablets. Um, I love putting the PDF books, the interactive questions on my tablet. So I do have an iPad and I have like a Windows tablet and they both kind of work differently. I think iPads are a little easier to navigate. So for this Windows tablet, um, I share the PDFs from the unit onto my Google Drive for school. So then all I have to do is um, access the drive from the tablet itself, um, log into my email and access that drive, and then I'm able to open it in different applications. So different book applications um, are allowing me to use it. So here I am answering the questions, the story takes place in the zoo, and then it says, great job. These are some of the pictures that you can laminate and add to your first then for the different centers. And I love going through the whole unit and just taking a look. There are recipes, um, different independent stations, read alouds. For the recipes, um, some of my kids need the sequencing mats and some of them don't. And so here are both recipe cards. I'm just going to set up my um, one recipe and I laminate the cards and then certain kids will work with me and we sequence the activity before um, we even do it as a whole class. And that's been kind of the best way that I've found to kind of incorporate it into my math instruction. And my kids really love them because then they can keep the sensory things for weeks to come. So it's been really great. All right, I'm filming this. Um back at school on the exact same day in the exact same spot. But I hope that this video was helpful. Please comment below. Tell me what was helpful, how you use it. If you're not already, please subscribe, but also go join um, Especially Education, Teaching Special Thinkers, Made For Me Literacy. Join those Facebook groups because everybody is contributing in those groups and on those pages and they're posting about how they're using this in their own classrooms. So I hope that this just adds to the discussion and if you've never heard of this before then I hope it helps you go out, take a look, maybe purchase it or try some of their free units that they like to release um, just to see if you like it and if it fits with your classroom. But anyway, Thank you so, so much for watching. I am so grateful for all of you. And until next time, 
Bye.